Hi, welcome back to week six of Key Concepts in Technology. This week we're studying media and the principles of mediation. Media and medium are other troubled terms to work with. And like communication and information, media are everywhere and there is very little of daily life today that isn't mediated, <laughs> including this video that you're now watching, which goes through multiple stages of technical and institutional mediation. Now like with communications and information, we have disciplines and professions that study media as technologies and industries throughout history. And in our present configuration, you know, print media and publishing, broadcast media, news media, entertainment media, digital media, and the convergences of media industries on the digital platform. And these professions are mediated through institutions and their media of authority and authorization, like journals, books, university degrees. Some of you may have had courses in these fields of study. Again, we're not going to cover what a media or communication studies program does, but we're going to work through our central questions to help uncover the key concepts behind our media technologies and investigate the larger question of mediation and how specific media technologies mediate pre-existing social functions in a larger system. So here's our big question. What do media mediate other than what we call content? And where does the power agency or effects we attribute to media technologies come from? Now this takes us back to the starting point of systems thinking and uncovering the relations that aren't visible in the technical properties of media, but make everything we can see work the way it does. Just one example here first to show where this Copernican reorientation, as I've been calling it, takes us. Now think about everything required for the internet to work in the way that we experience it. You launch an app and trigger a cascade of software routines and network calls that report back to your device. Everything going on with the internet is a great paradigm case for as we've seen, orchestrated combinatorial complexity. But the technologies are not autonomous, and they've come together only through a vast cooperating network of institutions and industry agreements, standards, law, government policy. Every data packet we send wirelessly depends on a history of standards and policy about radio frequencies and telecom infrastructure that we can't see but has to be in place for any of that to function the way we perceive it to. Of course, we can't study any of the details of this complex system, but as soon as you take the lid off any of our black boxes, like a smartphone or a PC, you find that all components are interfaces to this whole system of dependencies without which we wouldn't be able to use the device in front of us and get the responses that we do from the app. Your device mediates far more than the content on your display, which is only a tip on the proverbial iceberg. So we have some additional myth busting to do. So think about what our web of metaphors and terms commit us to. Terms like medium, content, channel, interface, what do these terms mean? Well, since Marshall McLuhan's work in the 1960s, we've been trying to get out of the conduit and transmission metaphors in popular discourse, and, and we saw some of that in the unit on, on information. And we want to investigate larger social and cultural questions that are only contingently technical. So beyond transmitting and representing content, how do media work? Why are they always a node in a larger system that we can't see? Well, most studies of media focus on the technologies and are mainly blind to all the essential social and cultural forces that form a system of co-mediation, as some scholars call it. Let, let's look at a major example. The power, authority, and influence of the book, of text documents, and all social forms of text, is the power and influence of the book and text a property of the physical medium, the artifacts, or of printing as a technology? 
Well, there's a good argument that the affordances of the Codex book, which was invented in antiquity, and the human scale of artifacts, of printed objects, support literate ways of thinking, cultural memory, national language, identities, development of learning, and abstract thought, all dominant values in our society. Well, as a cluster of implemented technologies, there are so many good affordances of the traditional design of the book that most ebook readers try to emulate them. In form factor, right, it's portable. You, you know, you can hold it in your hand and carry it around. And the experience of the page and layout and typography, because the dimensions fit human eye movement and the way that we can take in information in a particular format, right? So what's amazing is that so many ebook readers look more like the classical idea of a book than many print books do today. So books and texts aren't going away, and they are far from obsolete. I mean, why does Amazon sell more ebooks than paper books? Why do we have more text messages circulating around the world today than ever before? What's going on with web pages and social media posts? With digital remediation, text content is stronger than ever because the digital formats very successfully mediate the book and text functions, which are so deeply embedded in our culture, and they mediate the real sources of power and authority. Well, what are some of them? Well, social class requirements for literacy, education, government, law, religion, personal communication, consumer culture for book genres. Well, earlier technology gurus told us that someday books, texts, physical media are going to be obsolete. Well, they were looking at the wrong things. We are socialized into the book and text functions, very powerful functions that we can re-implement. Well, of course, I'm a digital geek too, and what I love about getting inside this question is finding out how the digital transition we're in now reveals another secret hiding in plain sight. The power, authority, influence, and effects of books and texts were never really a property of the printing technologies and bound paper artifacts. The power comes from the long installed base of social, cultural, political, and economic forces that can be re-implemented and mediated in new technologies. The power of the book was always hiding inside the physical artifact. So the history of media technologies is not a story of progress and obsolescence, a triumphal march to the inevitable media forms we have today. Media forms are never isolated and autonomous technical objects, right? They're, they're always part of a system. And today, digital and traditional media coexist in a continually reconfiguring, revalorizing, and remediating system. Well, we've just scratched the surface on what deeper thinking and research on media and mediation can open up. There are many other relevant issues that we can't cover here. But I hope that this lesson, as part of the building blocks of the course, will help you develop your own method of inquiry for media technologies and take you further in your learning and knowledge building.